Hello, this is ASMR Salter. Thank you for returning to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. Today I thought I would discuss something that is near and dear to my heart. That is the rosary. A lot of Catholics mm, maybe don't know about the rosary the promises that are attached to it, the indulgences. Um, some don't know how to pray the rosary. Um, and I think that I, first of all, I certainly am not an expert. A lot of the knowledge that I've gained in praying the rosary was through example, right? Seeing my grandparents pray it, my, my parents pray it, uh, and through my culture, um, praying the rosary for nine days, you know, before, you know, for the posadas or uh, funerals. So that's certainly where my love of the rosary came from. Um, but since then, I've researched it a little bit more as people ask me, why pray the rosary? How do you pray the rosary? What is it all about? So this information is just information I found through different sources on the internet. And so I just wanted to explain. So if you're interested, keep watching. So I do have my information on the screen. So you'll see me looking over here. Uh, and then you're also going to see me using my little cheaters. <laughs> Dollar Tree magnifying glass. This is the, I think I'm at a, I think I'm at a one. So yes. Oh yes. I can see myself a little bit better. <laughs> so why do Catholics pray the rosary? Um, the simple and repeated prayers of the rosary allow us to focus on Jesus's life. Uh, I think it's also a beautiful way to connect with our Lord and Savior um, through scripture and by meditating more deeply as we pray the rosary. For some it might be just repetitive, 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 but I feel that the more we say something, the more we begin to feel it, kind of like a mantra. Like I tell my students, ah, I'm a teacher, and you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Or, as I like to say to them sometimes, fake it till you make it, guys. Put on that positive attitude. And the more we feed ourselves this information, we start to live it, be it, embrace it. I think the same thing is true with the rosary, even though it is a repeated prayer, but you start to connect with the scripture and the meaning on a deeper level. And it's different every time. I think it has to do with what you're going through at the time. And honestly, there are days where when I pray the rosary, sometimes it's like, okay, I am not really that into it. And those are usually the most powerful times because then at the end, it's like, oh my goodness, thank you, Lord. I feel your peace and your presence in me. Um, other times when I turn to the rosary, because of what's going on in my personal life or one of my loved one's life. And it's more like a pleading, like, and again, even though I know the prayers, even though I know the scripture, it just takes on a new meaning. So where did the rosary come from? The history. I'm going to give a brief, brief history. <laughs> Um, and there's actually two stories out there, but this one seems to be the more popular one. Uh, before the rosary, people prayed the Psalms. So that's how, and it was 150 Psalms. Uh, but this all changed in the 13th century when Our Lady appeared to St. Dominic. He had a great, great devotion to her and prayed to her uh, for her help with his order, which was the Dominicans. And so, if I remember correctly, she appears to him, gives him the rosary and the prayers. Um, so, very short history on that. Um, and then another one that comes up is how do we pray the rosary? 
Uh, when you pray the rosary, you pray on one, you focus, uh, you meditate on one specific mystery at a time, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Uh, in the beginning, there used to be three mysteries, three sets of mysteries, uh, which was the joyful, sorrowful, and the glorious, and those you would pray them on certain days. Uh, but in 2002, Pope John Paul II, who is now a saint, declared uh, that 2003 would be the year of the rosary. And for the first time in centuries, a change was made. And he, he created a fourth set of mysteries, which we call the luminous, the light mysteries. Those are usually prayed on Thursdays. Those are sometimes my favorite. Um, I was blessed to see Pope John Paul II when he came to the United States back on September 13th, 1987. Um, I was in high school and when he came into the crowd, you know, you're in high school, you don't take things like this seriously and so you're just I had my cousins there and our family, and so we're just having fun. But when he comes into the crowd on his popmobile, you can Google pictures of that, I felt such a feeling of peace and calm, which I would later recognize to be the Holy Spirit. I didn't know at the time. I just knew we were there. We were going to see the Pope. I didn't really think of the importance of it. I just, my family was taking us and that's all. It sounds terrible that I'm saying this. <laughs> but from that moment on, whatever it was that I felt, that peace, that calm, it was almost, I don't want to say an addiction because that has like a negative connotation, but it was just a feeling that I've continuously sought after. Like I needed that peace. I needed that calm. I needed God. I needed the Holy Spirit. And looking back, looking back on my life, I've relied on it so many times through so many of the things that I've gone through. So if somebody were to ask me, which nobody's asking me these questions, <laughs> If somebody were to ask me, which is your favorite set of mysteries? I would say the light mysteries, just because he's the one who introduced them. So, this is the rosary. And if we were going to pray, let's say, the, the joyful mysteries, which are prayed on certain days, um, that we would meditate on the five decades, one, two, three, four, five. All of the scripture would be from the joyful mysteries and so forth. Um, so one set is prayed on five decades. Decades is there's, decades is 10, right? So there's 10, a set of 10. And on these small beads, you pray the Hail Mary on the beads in between, which there are also five, well, actually four, because this is the fifth one, um, you pray an Our Father. And then the mysteries are prayed on designated days. Uh, but sometimes it's different if you're praying um, during Lent, or sometimes in other countries, the, the days differ a little bit. But the core of the rosary always remains the same. Uh, the glorious mysteries here in the United States are prayed on Sunday and Wednesday. The joyful mysteries are on Monday and Saturday. The sorrowful on Tuesday and Friday. And the luminous on Thursday. So, you do the sign of the cross on the cross. And then the beat above that, or right after that, is the Apostles' Creed. Uh, then it's followed by three Hail Marys. Um, so the three Hail Marys, those are an expression of uh, special communion with God's grace. 
uh, because it expresses the virtues of faith, hope, and charity. Um, and then after that, we start off with the Our Father, which is right here. And then you'll start off, you, you recite the first mystery, and then you pray your ten Hail Marys. Um, there's also a Fatima prayer that you pray after. Um, and then I usually also say at the end, Our Lady Queen of Peace, and then everybody responds, pray for us. So kind of like that. And then Our Father, then the Ten Hail Marys, the Our Father, Ten Hail Marys, the Our Father, Ten Hail Marys, the Our Father, Ten Hail Marys. And then we end with uh, the Hail Holy Queen. That's kind of what it is in a nutshell. Um, so there are 15 promises that Our Lady has made when you devoutly pray the Rosary. Number one, those who faithfully serve me by the recitation of the Rosary shall receive signal graces. Number two, I promise my special protection and the greatest graces to all those who shall recite the rosary. Number three, the rosary shall be a powerful armor against hell. It will destroy vice, decrease sin, and defeat heresies. Number four, the recitation of the rosary will cause virtue and good works to flourish. It will obtain for souls the abundant mercy of God. It will withdraw the hearts of men from the love of the world and its vanities and will lift them to the desire of eternal things. Number five, the soul which recommends itself to me by the recitation of the rosary shall not perish. Number six, those who recite my rosary devoutly, applying themselves to the consideration of its sacred mysteries, shall never be conquered by misfortune. In his justice, God will not chastise them, nor shall they perish by an unprovided death, for example, be unprepared for heaven. Sinners shall convert. The just shall persevere in grace and become worthy of eternal life. Number seven, those who have a true devotion to the rosary shall not die without the sacraments of the church. Number eight, those who faithfully recite the rosary shall have during their life and at their death the light of God and the plenitude of his graces. At the moment of death, they shall participate in the merits of the saints in paradise. Number nine, I shall deliver from purgatory those who have been devoted to the rosary. Number ten, the faithful children of the rosary shall merit a high degree of glory in heaven. Number eleven, by the recitation of the rosary, you shall obtain all that you ask of me. Number 12, those who propagate the Holy Rosary shall be aided by me in their necessities. Number 13, I have obtained from my Divine Son that all the advocates of the Rosary shall have for intercessors the entire celestial court during their life and at the hour of their death. Number 14, all who recite the Rosary are my beloved children and the brothers and sisters of my only Son, Jesus Christ. And the last one, number 15, devotion for my rosary is a great sign of predestination. I will admit some of these are easier to understand than others, so I highly encourage you just to go and read them if they interest you as to the many, many benefits of the rosary. A lot of these I have experienced myself through the trials and tribulations that I've gone through in my life. And uh, so I highly encourage 